Welcome back family, AVS here and today I have some absolutely incredible footage to show you if you're wondering what you're looking at. This is an event that took place after the earthquake in Turkey and this is not too far from the river Euphrates. Now if you know about the river Euphrates it is very very heavily connected with end times prophetic events. If anybody has any idea what exactly is taking place here, what is on fire, I would be very very interested to find out but as of now I haven't done enough research to know exactly what that fire is. I can imagine it being very scary for whoever's witnessing that firsthand though because it literally looks like the ground has opened up and fire is coming out from it. But you know on this channel we keep it biblical and we always dive into the scripture so let's find out why exactly this event is so relevant. So let's get into it. What you're looking at on the screen right now are the exact locations of the earthquakes and their magnitude. So right above or up to the left of Gaziantep is a 7.8 magnitude earthquake which was the first earthquake to take place and if you take a look a little bit up to the right of Gaziantep you will see a 7.5 magnitude earthquake also took place and this was the second earthquake to occur. Now let's head over to Google Earth. This was actually one of my favorite pieces of software back in the day but let's fly over to the river Euphrates and take a look. If you look down here, this is the most famous part of the river Euphrates that is located in Iraq. And if you actually do some research, you will find out, well, you don't have to do some research because I did it for you, but basically the river Euphrates runs through three countries. So it runs through Iraq, it runs through Syria, and it runs through Turkey, okay? Now, this over here is where the earthquakes took place. In Turkey, the river Euphrates originates from the mountains of East Anatolia, okay? So that is where the river Euphrates is located in Turkey. But we have to understand it flows southeastward through the country, forming part of its eastern border with Syria. So remember, this is Syria here. And all of this is relevant, and you'll see why in a minute, okay? But in Syria, the river flows from the north to the south, and is an important source of water for agriculture and industry. And we know there's been a lot of, you know, political decisions that were made and a lot of greed that has caused certain prophecies to possibly, well, I'm not going to say that's the reason for the fulfillment of prophecy, but prophecy being fulfilled, it doesn't have to have conditions on it. If the Most High Yah says the river is going to dry up and it dries up for a reason that was not perceived by man, it doesn't mean that the prophecy is false. It simply means that the prophecy came true, but in an unexpected way. So my point is, it then flows down into Iraq, and the Euphrates River continues its journey to the south and eventually meets the Tigris River in the southeast to form the Shat al-Arab, which flows into the Persian Gulf, okay? So that bit isn't really relevant about the, um, the Persian Gulf, but what is relevant is this. If you look at how big this river is, even from this high up, look how big this river is. You can see it from basically, look, with, with all the way up in the sky, right? And you can literally see the river. That must mean it's huge. Now let's go to where the earthquake took place, which is around here. And this earthquake also affected outskirts as well because it was a 7.8 magnitude and a 7.5. Two earthquakes, this is huge. And the burning region, that is around here somewhere. Now we don't know the exact pinpoint region, but it is around here. And look how close the river Euphrates actually is. It is extremely close. But now let's head into the prophecies and understand why this is relevant and why I'm even talking about it in the first place. So I'm sure you're all aware of the book of Revelation and the amount of prophecies that are given in the book of Revelation because many people have made videos talking about the so-called fulfillment of certain prophecies, the pouring out of vials, etc, etc and trying to create parallels between reality and the book in present times and I'm not denying that there are those. In fact, I believe there are a lot of birthing pains that have taken place and I would like to bring your attention to chapter 16 verses 12 in the book of revelation where it states and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared now it goes on to say and i saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Now, before we move on, if you believe that you know who the false prophet is, let me know in the comment section below. It would be very interesting to read through all of your opinions and perspectives. But now let's move on to verse 14, for it says, For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world 
to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Now I'm sure many of you have seen pictures such as this one of the great river Euphrates drying up. It is extremely sad, you know, a lot of people are suffering, agriculture is suffering because of it, but this is prophecy. We are told about this in the book of Revelation, that the great river Euphrates would dry up. And you've probably seen these before and after images as well, which I've made a full video on explaining that there are drought seasons, but this does not contradict prophecy. And in some areas, the river has dried up so much that certain areas have been revealed that were at one point covered by water. And many have linked to the prophecies in Revelation 9.14. Now I have a video on this as well. And there are even times when soldiers have gone into certain caves and apparent strange sightings have taken place, which, you know, on this channel, I keep it extremely factual. And because I didn't come across that footage, I didn't make a video on it. But if anybody does have the footage of the apparent encounter with the soldiers and the unidentified being, let's call it that for now, please do feel free to send that over to my email address and I would be more than happy to check it out. But that is not what this video is about. So I showed you the drying up of the Euphrates River because it leads on to what we're about to talk about now, the actual point and purpose of this video. And this is where you all come in because we are the body of Messiah. We are supposed to be one on one accord. We are meant to uplift one another. We are meant to all play our parts in the body of Messiah. So I would very much appreciate all of your input on on the next point and that is this so when we read in revelation 16 12 and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east the kings of the east might be prepared and then it goes on to say and i saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet for they are the spirits of devils working miracles and go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Now, this is the part I want to focus on. It is in 12, where it says the kings of the east might be prepared. And how are they prepared? They are prepared because of the drying up of the water of the great river Euphrates. So, whether you believe the vial has been poured out or not, let me know in the comment section below, but that isn't really the purpose of what we're talking about here. We are going to go into Google Earth, which, as you know, is one of my favorite apps, and we're going to take a look. The East is over here. OK, so this is the East. And we know that the book of Revelation is reality. This is what people need to start realizing, especially those who are lukewarm and those who are still in the world. They need to realize that the Bible is a fact. It is reality. It is not just a book that sometimes gets things right. It has never been wrong. So. The kings of the east are over here. The river Euphrates is drying up. It is beginning to dry up. And when it does dry up, there is going to be a way for the kings of the east to head, obviously, west, right? I'm not going to add to the word, but that's my understanding. I believe that the, dr the river gets dried up so that the kings of the east can come this way, okay? Now, who do you believe the kings of the east are? That is what I want to know from you all. That is genuinely why I made this video. I want to know who you believe the kings of the East are because I am learning also. Do you believe that it is these countries over here, Iran? Do you believe that it is Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia? Do you believe that there will be a journey that comes from all the way over here and then crosses this river? What do you believe? That is genuinely why I'm making this video, but also to strengthen your faith, to show you that the Bible is a fact. It is the truth. This is not just theory. This is fact, 100%. Now, if you are somebody who is very, very wise, then maybe you can go on to the next point. Who are the three unclean spirits like frogs? Now, personally, when I analyze these type of things, I look at the reasons why the Most High may have explained certain spirits in comparison to certain animals or certain beings. Frogs, we know, have tongues that lash out of their mouth and can pull things back into themselves we know that it is going to come out of the mouth of the dragon now people who are unwise people who are in the world they mock the scripture because they do not have ears to hear and eyes to see so they say oh you guys think there's going to be a dragon that flies around and lets frogs out of its mouth okay if you really believe that's what we believe then i feel sorry for you because if you look at the words that are used it clearly says like okay it clearly says the word like it doesn't say that they are actually frogs it says like. So we are being taught something here. So let me know what you think about that. What do you think these spirits are? And we also find out that they come out of the beast 
and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So for those of you who are wise, you will be able to calculate who the dragon is, who the beast is, and who the false prophet is. And you will be able to comprehend what exactly is taking place here because there is three and these three spirits like frogs these three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and of the mouth of the beast and of the mouth of the false prophet now family i'm going to do something that i do not do very often especially publicly which is interpret the book of revelation and share my interpretation i'm going to do it briefly and i'll tell you why because we are told not to throw pearls before swine now, the majority of you here are not swine. You are my brothers and sisters in Messiah. But there are many who watch, who deny the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Messiah. And they are swine according to the scripture. So I'm not going to throw pearls before them. But I will give a brief interpretation of what I believe we are being told from 12 to 14. Okay, and I'm not going to add or take away from the word. I'm not claiming that this is scripture that I'm about to say. It is simply my understanding of this scripture. So, we are told that the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up. I believe that's quite self-explanatory. The sixth angel, when he pours out his vial on the great river Euphrates, the water thereof will be dried up. It's very clear that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So, we already went over this. Whoever you believe the kings of the east to be, whoever they truly are, they are going to be coming over, I believe, towards the great river Euphrates because it has dried up okay so it makes it possible for them to now you know do whatever they want to do um in these end times and i saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet now what are these spirits like frogs these unclean spirits like frogs well they are the spirits of devils and what do they do? They work miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Now, this is what I believe about these two passages here. I believe that the unclean spirits like frogs are going to travel around the world, leap around the world as frogs do. You know, they bounce around. I believe they're going to bounce around the entire earth, looking for people to gather now, why do I believe that this is relevant to frogs? Because tongues of frogs, they kind of lash out of their mouth and then suck things back into themselves. So I believe that the frogs are going to be, the unclean spirits like frogs are going to be bouncing around the whole world and trying to gather the kings of the earth. Why? For the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Because they believe that they actually can defeat God because they're stupid, because they are ignorant, because they are prideful. So that is what I believe. And that is a very brief interpretation, by the way. I didn't take any glory for that interpretation. The Most High Yah's wisdom is perfect and all glory goes to him. But that is what I truly believe about that. The unclean spirits are going to leap around the entire world, trying to gather the kings of the earth with their tongues, licking them into themselves and gathering them for the battle of the great day of God Almighty. But remember what we're told here. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame so if you want to be blessed keep watch the messiah is coming back and he's coming back as a thief but remember what we're told in the book of thessalonians that day will not come upon us in the same way that it will come upon those who are not watching so be wise family stay in the body okay and uh yeah that's that's as far as i'm going to go with the interpretation if you want to be more connected with me i recommend that you join my my other social medias that i have i have a discord server and i also have a telegram group um it's great for discussion about these kind of things and the moderators that i have in there they try to keep the swine out as best as possible stopping people who are there to deceive and and demonize people from from being deceivers and uh yes this is very very deep prophetic analysis and that is why i'm not making any claims here i'm simply opening up a place for open discussion so please family when you see people say things in the comment section that you may disagree with please don't attack them please don't mock them please don't say they're stupid or something because they disagree with what your interpretation is because i don't believe that that is a wise way to come into deeper knowledge and truth i believe we have to have an open mind we have to be willing to listen to people and even if you disagree then you disagree peacefully because the word is the sword if anybody disagrees with the word they are wrong right they are wrong but here is the final point for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of god almighty so they're going to be very deceptive they're going to do things in order to get their own way 
which they perceive to be their own way anyway. And uh, yeah, it's not going to be very good for them in the end because we know who wins. That is the savior of mankind, Christ himself, the word who became flesh. If you guys haven't given your life to Christ, make sure you do it as soon as possible. Believe that he is the Lord. Believe that he died for you. His blood was shed and he rose on the third day. Okay. The crucifixion and the resurrection is the only way you will enter the kingdom of heaven. You are saved by grace, through faith, and not of your works so that nobody can boast. When you are saved, if you love him, you will keep his commandments. But you are not saved by earning your salvation. And I have to tell you that, that is honestly actually the main purpose of this video is to save souls. But yeah, it's always great to uh, have discussions with those of you who are truly in the body. And maybe elders may have been studying scripture for years. For those of you who don't know, I was only saved around four years ago. And um, I'm on my journey as well. So I'm doing my best and I pray that you continue to pray for me. If you enjoy my content, family, make sure you do hit that thumbs up button, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. I would greatly appreciate that. I love you all so much. I pray you have a beautiful day. And oh yeah, also shout out to all of the members of the channel who support my channel financially. If you want to do so, click that join button. Other than that, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Shalom.